Andrew. <laughs> okay, I, I call the I call the regular meeting. I call to order the regular meeting of the City Council of Aransas, the City of Aransas passed February 4, 2019 at 6 p.m. That's all rise for the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. Gary's going to do Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to serve the community, serve you in the process. We thank you for the opportunity to make decisions that impact so many people. And we uh, want to also thank you for the opportunity to, to do good in the community for this uh, uh, council, for the citizens of, of this community. Uh, you've given us many wonderful things, and we appreciate it. We thank you. And uh, uh, again, we thank you for the opportunity. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're going to go to presentations and uh, proclamations. Uh, it's a presentation, update, and discussion regarding demolition and vacant dilap dilapidated. dilapidated structures in the city. Mayor and City Council members, my name is Roxanne Faiscotoneo. I am the Aransas Pass City Attorney. It is an honor to be here with you again today and to give you an update on the great things that are happening behind the scenes, the things that happen on a daily basis at City Hall, and how we're moving to improve and clean up this community. Today, I'd like to give you a quick presentation, and there's really three things we're going to be talking about. We're going to be giving you a progress report on the demolitions that have occurred in town. I'm going to refresh, number one, your memory of our last PowerPoint presentation that was conducted on October the 15th, 2018. Number two, I'm going to give you an update on what has happened since October 15th, 2018 and what has come down. And number three, I'm not going to tell you what's next. But before I proceed, it must be important for me as a city attorney to welcome and introduce some of your board members, Chairman Moore, along with board member Rodriguez from the building board of standards and appeals and I'd like for them to please stand and thank them for their time. We have spent time together behind closed doors other than today. So I'd ask mm -hmm. Mayor that you recognize them. Thank you all for this work. Thank you all very much. Yes. yes. Really so let's get it. exciting. Yes. So let's get started. The demo team. Now you know that consists of one of our most amazing building officials, Burl Smith. <laughs> of course, it also consists of one of Burl's assistants. I call her M. Um, short and fast. M is not here tonight, but she is a crucial part of this team, as well as Corey, who is with the police department and does our code enforcement. That we do have a new code enforcement officer by the name of Tito who has joined us as well. This team, let me tell you, would save my life and each other life in this room as quickly as possible and I rely on them consistently on what we're about to present. So let's get started. So if you remember, and it's not working Is it again. turned on? Did you turn it on? Thank you. All right, these are the total demolitions that we talked about on October 15, 2018. You remember 124 Allen that had actually two structures on it, but we're calling that just as one structure for one address. Four demolitions came down through our meet and greet process. We had additional ones came down voluntarily as we sent meet and greet letters out. That was for a total of 18. You were so impressed with that. But I have to tell you that when we started that in July, we were training the staff and getting this, these things down. So it was a really a good time to start because then the holiday comes along. And with that holiday, I want to show you what have we done since October 15th. Remember Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's? Ah, oh, it didn't slow us down. We had great successes. Let's take a look. 837 South Rife. This was a nice one. This was an elderly lady, elderly lady and her husband. Um, she was a former teacher. She came in, 
She had sentimental value on that before structure. Her father had built it, but she understood that it did need to come down. It took a couple of months, but we got it down. So thank you for her cooperation. We met with her several times throughout those two months. You know this one, 1052 South Rife. That LWR building, boy, was that a public health and safety standard violation. But it is gone, and we are happy about that. 216 South 10th Street. God, this one was an interesting one. You see that garage just kind of like leaning over? It was right next to a beautiful structure, like a nice house that was well painted and taken care of. So we uh, sent them a meet and greet letter. I don't know, next time we sneezed and turned around, it was gone. So thank you to those uh, owners for getting that down as quick as they did. 206 South McCampbell. This was a couple as well. The woman's family had built that structure. That's it's hard to kind of tell. At first you think it's kind of nice, but okay. it's kind of lean and twisted and no. contorted. <laughs> uh, they were from out of state. They did come mm -hmm. down a couple mm -hmm. of times to visit with us. They knew it had to, be, had to come down. It was a historical moment for them. They loved the structure. They knew it had to come down, but they wanted to do whatever they could to try to reclaim it. And so what they came up with was an idea to reclaim some of the wood and some of the hardware and take that back to make something great and finished off the job by demolishing the rest. So restoration hardware at its best. There you go. 103 North Commercial Street. This is actually a commercial building that belongs to a widower. Her name is Dahlia Sanchez, but it's not the Dahlia Sanchez that you know. It's a completely other Dahlia huh. Sanchez. Um, the interior, the, the bones of the structure are strong, they're concrete, but the interior is a mess and right next to that is actually attached to the building is some really nice restaurant equipment there is that uh, could make that into a, a good place to have a restaurant. So they're not done cleaning that up. Right, so they've started the cleanup, they'll finish the cleanup, we believe we'll finish cleaning that up within the next 10 days. So we'll have a clean interior. The property is for sale, and so hopefully we will be able to have somebody pick that up with that great restaurant equipment that's on the side of it to, to get it up and running again. Since October 15th, we also have had seven additional voluntary demolitions with the meet and greet letters that have been sent out. And so before October 15th, there was 18. After October 15th, with Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, there was 12. That is a total of 30 demolitions since we got serious about pulling these things down and we're only halfway in. Mm -hmm. So much more to do. So what's next? I know you're gonna know because you keep telling me there's still more stuff. Mm -hmm. We see it and we are still working behind closed doors. So let's take a look at this next one. 1337 yeah. West yeah. Wheeler. That actually, a demo permit has been pulled. They've been taking down the interior of the structure. If you've driven by there, even the blue um, siding on the top roof has come down. We have met with those owners. They are in the process of renovating it. They do want to build a commercial structure back up in there. They want to also build up the back storage unit too. So they're demolishing and repairing and we're constantly on them. We're meeting with them every two weeks to make sure that that happens. Progress has been made. It's slow, but it's being made. And as long as they're making it, we'll get to the end result soon. 719th North Commercial. This was the Y Fish Market. Remember the employed hundreds of people? The elderly lady who owns this sweet lady, her name's Miss Butler, she has transferred ownership of that to her grandson. Her grandson has pulled a demolition permit. They have been making progress to remove the interior contents, and we expect that to be demolished probably within the next six weeks. Uh, sweet lady, I'm glad that her grandson's taking care of it. So what do we do now? I mean, there's still more structures out there. We met recently, when I say we, I mean the city staff. We met with the board of, uh, the building board of standards and appeals and trained them on what their authority was regarding demolitions, repairs, and vacations and of structures in the city. And so that's why I wanted to make sure we recognize them today. They are lending their volunteer time to sit and act as judges, quasi-judges, in fact, with authority on instructing people what to do with their structures. We do have some new structures we think that we're gonna be sending them to soon. Um, I'm gonna tell you a list about structures that may or may not go to them next. It depends on how the outcome works the next two weeks. 
We have 357 South Saunders that's owned by a Mr. Galvan. Mr. Galvan does have a lien holder on the property. The lien holder was a person, not a bank. The person has died and has left numerous heirs that we are in constant contact to track down. It's more to be continued on that one. 322 South 12th Street. This is one that's brand new on our list. We're going to let you know how that one turns out. 104 West Wheeler. This is one where the property owner is ignoring us, so we expect <laughs> that one's probably going to be going to the board soon. 1414 North Highway. By the way, that last one, that one's right next to the garage next to the tattoo building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Rand's glass. Yeah. Yeah. Rand's glass. We have tried everything to get a hold of them short of filing suits or filing notice for the board. Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping whoever owns that and is watching this will contact us soon mm -hmm. before well, they start occurring. In They're in Rockport. Yeah. On well, Market Street. They're not responding to us. Go cool. knock on their door. <laughs> the owner's out of town. The owner lives out of town. Uh, the glass company mm -hmm. that was there before, they were leasing that yeah, building. They don't know. The glass company oh. actually picked up the office building that was there right. and moved it. Okay. But they were leasing these gentlemen are from out of state, uh, and the people that own it are no longer, are, are not communicating with us. Uh, okay. But yes, you can go back to the glass company and get the name of the people that own it, but I'm sure she wouldn't be glad to do that. Because mm. I think they have a little problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. It ain't over. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't seen a mad city attorney. They've just seen a nice city attorney right now. All right, let's next. 1414 Highway 35 North. Bipolar insulation. Oh, Mr. Bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> he started off ignoring us, and we kept hounding the realtor, hounding him. He finally came along. He's gotten into demo of Humrich, and he has started to demolish um, in fact, the building doesn't look like that today. Some of the sheets have been torn down. It's so I'm cleaner. hoping for his sake that that will be down within the next few weeks as well. 1030 North Houston, this is a vacant residential structure. We flat out can't find out who the owner is. All mm. the records are completely messed up on this, um, even governmental records. Um, mm. So we are on a hunt and just like the chief will hunt it down. <laughs> oh, and one of my favorites. 1212 oh. Highway 35, Pepitos. Well, you'll remember Pepitos had a second structure on there. It was a smaller structure. He demolished that structure. Now, this is a really great story because Pepito was not listening to us. But when the bank got the notice, he listened to the bank. And so the bank talked to him about it, and that's when he finally came to us. The story ends up that he demolished the smaller structure. He was thinking that he was going to repair this structure. Oh. He got inside it and realized it is non-repairable. The city building official and I have worked with him and the bank to declare it a loss. And the demolition permit is, has been pulled, I think, today or will be pulled oh. tomorrow. Yeah, and that, too, yeah. will be coming down. We have talked to him about what to do because that's an important incoming corner into our city limits. And um, he originally wanted to put a boat storage place there, but we have since talked to him and have said perhaps something um, that would make you greater money would be there. Great. So he's looking at thinking about townhomes there. That's the last. But regardless, just get it down, right? And we'll rebuild as yeah. we go. So those are the structures that we have looked at and demolished, looked at have been voluntarily Yay. demolished, looked at and will soon be demolished, um, and the new structures we're just beginning to poke into. I hope that this satisfies your need for a cleanup in the community for the past seven months, 30 total. We really want to move forward with now bringing one, two, perhaps three properties to our building board for their review and orders. We hope that we have the city council's blessing. And for any of you who said, man, are they really going to start to do this? You betcha. We have yeah. and we've done. Roxanne, I also heard from somebody who eats at Pep's all the time in Portland and that owner owns this property that they actually are now considering and this was last week that they would rebuild a brand new modern uh, pepitos there he's thinking of that now so 
Good as news. As long as it's new. <laughs> exactly. Anything to yeah. do back up. Yeah. Yep. So, council members, we do have a couple of properties. We want to move forward with the building and uh, board of standards and appeals. We hope that we have that blessing. Never be uh, afraid to let you know that we keep you informed. We do the meet and greets. It's our goal to seek mm -hmm. compliance. Sometimes uh, meet and greets aren't going to always handle the situation. And it's time to go to the next level with the building board. With that said, citations are always issued to different property owners that you actually will not see on this PowerPoint slide. We've had numerous successes with citations in municipal court with owners gaining compliance. We will keep moving her forward and thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Good it. job. Thank you. Nice mm. presentation. Yes. Now we're going to go to board and commission appointments, and it's for the library board. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and Council, this should be an easy one. Everybody wants to be reappointed. Anita Kirkland, Marshall, uh, Marshall Wellman, and Paula Stone, all <coughs> are incumbent <coughs> members and wish to be reappointed with your approval. Well, I make a motion. We approve Anita Kirkland. Marshall Wellman and Paula Stone to the library board. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> now we're going to go to the consent agenda. All of the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the council member so requests. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. All, Set. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're going to go to Gary. Mr. Mayor and Council, a, a few items. Uh, first item of uh, uh, significance, uh, and that is following up on earlier discussions that we've had on the fire truck and the financing related to the fire truck. Uh, we're ready to uh, bring additional information to you. Bids uh, were submitted. They look good. And at that point, I'll turn it over to Andrew Friedman of SAMCO, who can uh, fill you in on where we are on the fire truck financing issue. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Andrew Friedman with SAMCO Capital Markets. Very pleased to be here this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, handing out a short packet that details the summary of the bid results. Uh, that we took on Friday at noon. Uh, you can see we received six bids, the best being from J.P. Morgan Chase Bank uh, out of San Antonio uh, at a rate of 2.57%, adjusted for their purchaser's cost, which was uh, their lawyer uh, to review the transaction that uh, bumped that true interest cost to 2.583%. Behind the second, or on the second page, I uh, wanted to be looked at with staff uh, between a lease purchase agreement to buy that fire truck or going this tax note route. And so I wanted to show you a comparison uh, of, of the lease purchase that uh, the interest rate that you had in hand at 3.98% for a seven year lease purchase. Uh, the final results with this winning bid at 2.57%, there's a $32,000 benefit by selling tax notes versus entering into a lease purchase agreement. Uh, because the lease purchase uh, interest rate is so much higher. Uh, so uh, the, the comparison between the two, I think it makes sense to go the tax note route. That's, again, net of all costs uh, associated with having to issue the tax note. It's still a $32,000 benefit. Uh, behind that are the uh, actual, uh, all of the detail of the numbers, which I won't go into, but we will. Uh, it's a fixed rate, 2.57% over seven years. Debt service is roughly $260,000 a year uh, for each of those years. Uh, rates won't change. The bonds will not be callable. Uh, but given that we see interest rates on the rise, we don't think there will be any reason for you all to need to call in uh, these tax notes before they finally mature. I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. I'm happy to go into more detail in those numbers uh, if you would like. But I turn it over to you all for questions now. So this is a seven-year tax note? Yes, ma'am.
And when would we get the, the ladder truck? Approximately. That's the chief question. When would our first payment be due? You look on page three, which is not actually the third page. It details your first interest payment will be February of February 1, 2020. Okay. So just about a year away. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. We wanted to set that payment date also so that you have time to set, take this into consideration for your upcoming budget that you'll be working on in August, September, set your tax rate in September, and then actually have time to collect those taxes uh, before that February 1st payment. motion to approve the City Council of Aransas passed and authorizing issuance of City of Aransas Pass, Texas Tax Notes Series 2019, levying an annual ad valorem tax within limitations prescribed by law for the payment of the obligations prescribing the reform terms, conditions, and resolving other matters incident and related to the issuance, sale, and delivery of the obligations authorizing the execution of a paying agent registrar agreement and a purchase and investment letter complying with the letter of representatives. There's a second page. Second page? Second page. Oh, man, I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> okay, there. previously executed with the depository trust company and providing an effective date. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Now we're going to go to the order of election. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and Council. worked all day. <laughs> Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, next item is the um, is the election. If you agree uh, to move forward with the uh, with the um, uh, May fourth, twenty nineteen election, uh, and the uh, reason for the election is uh, selecting a mayor and two council members, places one and three. Also, uh, the uh, continuation, if you agree, of the uh, uh, Crime Control Prevention District, uh, the sales tax, use tax for 10 years, which has been discussed by this body, as well as the Crime Control Board. Uh, also, contracting with the uh, San Pat Elections Board to do the election. The cost for the city would be, the cost for the election would be $20,000. However, uh, the school board also has an election, so we'll be sharing that cost with the school board. Those are the three items this particular piece of legislation will address if you agree. Well, I'll make a motion we approve resolution 2019-879. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> now we're gonna go to public safety. Okay, Mayor and Council, I think what is my Oh, the easy one. So I'm coming to you again for a vehicle fleet purchase. We were budgeted for four this year. We've already bought one, and I'm coming to you now for three. The uh, last set of Durangos that you might, might have seen on the street took us over a year to get in. We had a lot of problems with our outfitter for uh, the equipment on it. Uh, but we have hopefully a good solution in place right now. So I'd like to go ahead and order 
two uh, marked police vehicles and uh, purchase one unmarked off the lot uh, from Alan Samuels, who still holds the blanket bid. I'll be coming to you all for a new bid this uh, next year, I believe. We're going to have to go out for new bids. And the amount mm -hmm. shall not exceed 135000 completely outfitted. And this replaces the one admin vehicle and two marked patrol SUVs. This will replace, yeah. yes, one admin vehicle, which is the patrol captain, and then the two marked police vehicles, we might try to get more out of the other ones still uh, and try to preserve these, keep the miles down on them a little bit longer. But uh, those other ones are starting to cost us a lot on maintenance. Everybody okay on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we allow the police chief to purchase one unmarked police vehicle and two marked patrol vehicles from Alan Samuels and Aransas Pass for an amount not to exceed $135,000 with funds from the federal drug seizure account. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And the next item here, it's going to take me a while. It's a 105-page report. I'll start reading from the first page. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is uh, the annual uh, racial profiling report that is statutorily required for submission to the state of Texas. A lot of the language in there is, is basically giving you background, telling you about the law, the changes as they result from the Sandra Bland Act uh, this past year. Uh, in addition, we regularly perform audits on our data. We do so four times a year through an outside uh, auditor just to make sure that uh, there are no issues that we need to focus on. And I will say, uh, from looking at this report, we're pretty well on par with the breakup of our community based on uh, the, the different uh, races and ethnicities in the community. For example, there's about 60% of households are uh, white, and about 60% of people stopped on a traffic stop, cited, searched, whatever, are white. And those numbers are pretty well consistent all the way down the chain, which I'm, I'm actually surprised by that. But uh, the numbers are consistent. He sees no issues. We had no complaints of racial profiling this past year. Uh, we got a clean bill of health. So I just need to present that to you. And it's already been uploaded to the state. And we fulfilled our responsibility for this year. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Good job, Eric. Thank you. Good Very job. Nice got a job. wonderful team. No Thank you all. Do what, Mayor? I haven't heard no complaints at all. All I've heard is good stuff. Yeah. Good. Love it. I got a team working hard out there to make it good. Huh? Now we're going to go to city council or staff announcement, and we're going to have another citywide cleanup scheduled February 16, 2019. Scheduled time is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The last one was so successful, and I'm very serious when I say that. The dumpsters were filled in two hours of the three hours we had allotted. Uh, so it's important to have additional ones. So this is a follow-up, Mayor and Council. Very good. Okay. And there's going to be one dumpster at 520 West Cleveland, one at 1052 South Rife, and one at the community park. No tires. No, no tires. tires. No, no tires. Yes, I was fixing no it. Yeah, no tires in each one of those. Okay. So they are taking construction debris at the Cleveland one? According to this, it says trash, construction yeah. debris, furniture, bicycles. Yes. Everything except no tires. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Now we're going to go to citizen comments. Citizen comments are intended mm -hmm. for the matter that are not scheduled on the agenda. Please limit your comments to three minutes and state your name and address for the record. Be advised that the Texas Open Meeting Act prohibits the city council from responding and discussing your comments. The law authorizes the following. Make a statement of factual, factual information, recite existing policy, advise that this subject may be placed on the agenda for a subsequent meeting. Sure. I'm Myron Schrader, 246 East Stoddard. Uh, we've seen a lot of updates come before the city council regarding the building and the repairs that have been done due to Hurricane Harvey. And uh, I want to compliment the city on how well they've done on getting the city back in shape. 
one of the projects I haven't heard of in a, in a while, I know the city has been working on it for about 10 to 12 months, and that is the HMGP uh, flood mitigation grants. Mm -hmm. And I, would, I know that the city has been working on it, and I would like to know if we could get an update as to how much has been done, how much needs to be done, and when the uh, grants are expected to be submitted. Yeah, if you yeah. Would, if, if you <laughs> would, that would be great. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, right now, uh, as far as hazard mitigation goes, uh, in fact, the uh, the grant application went in. What is today on Friday, Thursday? Went in on Thursday for um, 29 generators uh, related to the various lift stations, etc. Uh, we'll know in a few days, well, I'd say if you will know as soon as possible what the result of those are. Now, with that said, there are other areas that, um, uh, that uh, uh, hazard mitigation sometimes will cover. Uh, elevation, for example, I think that's, that's a primary concern yes, of yours fine, but, yeah. uh, that we're looking at uh, for uh, CDBG. Uh, we have uh, a number of dollars available in that area, and uh, in fact, we've got another meeting coming up um, a teleconference meeting on that issue in in getting the um, uh, the grant or the company that we have hired to work with us on the applications uh, let them know the different things that we're uh, uh, going to bring forward through that source and uh, we're anticipating elevation uh, very likely will be one of those uh, and, but there are going to be many more uh, we just haven't finalized that and there are two members of the council who are on that uh, on that committee, and uh, uh, we have $10 million to work with there. We anticipate using all of those. Uh, so that's that's where we are. Okay, so uh, for at least as far as the home elevation grants, are there other things that are being included in that grant, or is it just for that? Um, I can't answer that at this point because we okay. haven't uh, researched that thoroughly, but it's in that general area that includes uh, the elevation. Um, and I can get with you later uh, on uh, as we finalize that and as we move forward with that. So there's no estimate as to what time frame we're talking about? Yes, there is a very tight estimate on that. I believe it closes in April. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are in the process now of uh, gathering the information so the applications can be submitted. Okay, yeah. good deal. And is this Hurricane Harvey funds or is this? It ha it's uh, it's uh, CDBG slash DR. Uh, so disaster um, okay. uh, project. So yes, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Howard, would you like to give us an update on the hospital? <laughs> the last correspondence I had with the hospital, I asked them what their progress was. They asked me that, well, you know, you talked about uh, building a county hospital on the bypass. Would it be a possibility that we could get that money for our phase one because we can't get the funds? And I said, no, I would not be able to help you with that kind of thing. One, we don't have the money for a county hospital anyway right now. I said, but for me to find, you know, funding for you that I promised I would work on, you need to be a 501c3, not for profit. Where are you at in that? And that's where the conversation ended. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, but okay, there's a caveat to that. You know, uh, that Aransas County is also working on the area of a hospital out on the bypass. There may be some interest from so another hospital company kind of thing. Somebody who does hospitals, uh, and. I, I was in touch with, uh, with Randall Freeze, who's working for Aransas County now, and Judge Mills. And uh, uh, as I have more information and they firm more things up, I will, I will bring more information to you on that also. There, it's still, this is conceptual now, so it's not, there's no plan, or, but it would be to have a, uh, it'd be in Aransas County, be on the bypass, but with emergency services in each of the other cities so that the emergency rooms were there, the, the lab, the, the uh, radiology, and uh, 
pharmacy was there for emergency room services, and but they would the, the, the emergency rooms would support the hospital. Okay, so there's still a possibility that we can reuse Care Regional at some point in the future for emergency services, and possibly even what we talked about before, psychiatric services, mental health issues, uh, with the beds that are existing there. I mean that's but that's conceptual. There is no plan as far as I know on paper. There's no money. And I'd be lying to you if I said there was, okay? For continuing to pursue. I just discussed that with the new county judge this morning, the discussions I'd had with Lorenzo's County. Okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, everybody asks. Every day you get I that know, question. I know, I know they do and I and you told I me that last would, Friday night, I would, but I wanted yeah, everybody I would to know that. I the county commissioner. I didn't tell you that first. But uh, I was read in as far as a non-disclosure agreement with them. Right. And, and they've given me no information not to disclose. <laughs> I mean, they've had meetings. I haven't been invited, I, you know. So I can't even tell you something that I don't know. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> bueno. Okay, now we're going to go to executive session, section 551.071 of the Texas Open Meeting Act to meet with its attorney to seek legal advice on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the city council under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meeting Act relating to Thomas Dutton versus City of Aransas Pass, cause number S-18-6046 CV-B in the 156th District Court in San Patricio County, Texas. The next one is section 551.071 of the Texas Open Meeting Act to meet with his attorney to seek legal advice on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the City Council under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meeting Act and Section 551.074 to deliberate the appointment, employment evaluation, reassignment duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee. And that's the Municipal Court Judge. And we shall be back. And the time is 6.35. Time, yeah. Time is 6 38. Alrighty. Hey. All right. So good to see you, Howard. Hey, I was talking to um, a doctor. He's the do head, one of the head doctors at one of those new facilities in Portland. His name doctor. is Matt Kern. Yeah. Not that kind of head doctor, oh. but yeah, you do need a head doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. his reason.
Necesita para recycle. ¿Qué hora? ¿Qué? It's working. It says, please wait. Okay, we're going to reconvene open session at 747. 747. No action. So I'll make a motion we adjourn this meeting. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bye, Felicia.